Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your card brochure channel. Today we'll be looking at the Renault Espace. Hello, welcome back. And if you are into car brochures, this is the channel for you. There'll be lots of car brochure videos coming up and indeed in the bank catalogue. So today, the, the uh, Renault Espace. Now, an unusual little start for the Renault Espace. Actually, the design goes all the way back to the 70s. British designer, actually, um, um, Fergus Pollock. I was just trying to think of his name then. Who actually worked for Chrysler UK at the time. Um, initially, the idea um, was this was going to be a Talbot badged vehicle. Uh, Matro kind of like ran with the idea um, and developed it. Um, but by 78, um, PSA uh, took over and they didn't really want to run with the design. Um, so Matra then took it to uh, Renault and the rest is history. They chose the Espace name. And it was launched in July 1984. Very poor seller at the start. Only around about nine units were actually sold in the first month. Um, but eventually, people did catch on that this was a very practical vehicle. Um, the vehicle didn't actually arrive to the UK until the year after. Um, I think it was actually August 1985. This brochure is actually July 1985 for the UK market. So this is a very early one and shows some of the design ideas, the seating arrangements, etc. I think it'll only be a short uh, brochure video today. It's not a very long brochure, this one. But let's open up and find out. And there it is in all its glory. Obviously, there was lots of generations of the Espace, but this was kind of like the closest to the original drawings. Um, very sloping front end of it, and you know, practical, but you know, quite normal uh, doors on the sides. Um, a lot of fiberglass materials were used, of course, um, like the uh, Matra. Rancho, of course, which really this was originally designed to replace the Matra Rancho on the uh, production line. But like I say, it was uh, Matra did actually approach Renault and then uh, it got the Renault badge on there rather, rather than a Talbot badge. But yeah, I mean, it looks very futuristic, doesn't it? Um, even today, it's quite a striking design. So I'm not surprised it was such a poor seller in its first month. Um, it took you know the people to get a bit of use to this sort of MPV type vehicle. The, the brochure itself is an unusual one. Yeah, there's a few marks on there, um, but it's a very very shiny one. I don't know if you can see how shiny that is. Um, a very uh, certainly different than uh, the Renault brochures would have been, um, and certainly a different material on there. Um, it is only a short brochure, this one, and, and that sort of shininess continues throughout. First of all, it's promoting this clever seating with these swivel front seats, etc. And it does show more graphics about the seats, because really this vehicle was all about that sort of practical interior, uh, a good family vehicle. Um, and as we move it over, it even shows that uh, the seat swiveled down this sort of like table idea so you could all sit around and have something to eat, maybe on some kind of like long distance road trip. A clever design really, wasn't it? And it was, certainly was different thinking. We will look at all these different seating arrangements in a bit, but let's just have a quick look at some of the text. So he's saying here, Renault Espace, a new concept. Studies of the changing needs of people form an essential part of Renault's continuing commitment to excellence. This can be clearly seen in the Renault Espace, a totally new and brilliant de uh, design concept, though built and proven techniques and experience. Today, the motor car has become a central part in the lifestyles of many people. For family weekends and holidays, for shared leisure activities, for business on the move, for clubs and local associations. To these expanding requirements, 
especially for small parties of people, the Renault Spass offers a new solution. So they were really trying to sell this new idea um, to really show what a very practical vehicle it actually was. It goes on to talk about comfort and versatility. Good to look at, quiet and a pleasure to drive. The Renault Espace is a car in the luxury class with a high level of standard equipment to match. It can double as a living room for families, as a mobile sales office, as a place for on-location business meetings. The possibilities are almost infinite. Um, and then it goes to tell a little bit more about the seats and then it, say, it says a little bit about the Renault Espace 2000 TSE um, which shows the, the front seats can actually swivel and then it says driving pleasure for all its, all its internal spaciousness the Renault Espace is shorter in overall, overall length than most family estate cars and can be garaged or parked with delightful ease so really showing that you know it's way more practical than what you've got now your estate cars you've got now but it's still not as long as a state car so it's still going to be good around town and on your driveway and of course mp mpvs or people carriers which however you want to refer to it or quite simply as vans as they say in north america they really caught on and there was lots of different makes of different vans that really became um, very commonplace on the roads. This, of course, has pretty much kind of ended now. People are starting to favour the, uh, the SUV, which obviously is way less practical. So I'm not really sure how that change came about. Um, but there you go. I think the, the people carrier got a bit of an image as being... A not very interesting car but these earlier spaces were certainly a very interesting vehicle um, so it does show the different seating arrangements on these early ones um, if we can just focus on it's a little bit hard to focus in on this shiny paper so there we go it's showing the different seating arrangements so at the top there you could just have it and um, seats as what you would have in a normal car two front three in the middle and a large um, luggage area or you could have this very unusual setup uh, 212 which is quite an unusual one to do for sure um, and then of course you can fold them all down to have like a, a, a van uh, which was very practical here it shows the seat swiveling around so you could be very close to each other here with all the seats up um, so you could have a seven seater just had to count for a minute a seven seater uh strange little four seater with this sort of like table in the middle and this three seater i guess if you wanted to put longer loads in and then this one where we're all swiveled round with a little table in the center so i'm really just showing the practicalities of this vehicle and then finally on the back page we do get a little bit of another image of this car um, and the specifications so we will go through the specifications two models at this time the 2000 gts and the higher spec 2000 tse i'm not going to go through everything of it but you can see things like the higher spec model had those front spoiler in, in integral fog lamps which is showing in here um, so yeah i mean it's the usual sort of things the high spec model gets more equipment and uh, like alloy wheels on the TSE etc power assisted steering on uh, both models and like I say you can always pause this video anytime if you do want to specifically look at how it changed between the two eventually going down to here to show the options so you can actually have a twin tilting glass sunroof which would have been certainly a nice feature I think and then overleaf it tells you the technical specifications so it is a four cylinder engine a 1995 cc um, the transmission it's a five speed uh, manual gearbox showing the the braking system and the wheels and the tires the suspension and then overall length 
and then later on we come down to performance i'm sure performance wasn't really high on your agenda when looking for this type of vehicle but it was reasonably quick of course the drag coefficient 0.35 or 0.32 for the high spec model was very good for this type of vehicle so we've got a maximum speed of 109 miles per hour and 0 to 62 in 11.9 which really wasn't too bad in 1985 uh, fuel economy also was reasonably good um, at a constant 56 we're looking at 41.5 or 43.5 for the TSE the TSE that little bit more coefficient I guess helping with those miles per gallon so for again for 1985 they weren't really bad figures so you could have a practical vehicle you could afford to run it it was reasonably uh, quick enough to keep up with the modern traffic at the time so it, overall it was a very clever package and then of course the little uh, Renault um, Western Avenue London and of course at this time Renault re recommends Elf lubricants um, not that it was different than anyone else but um, that's what Renault's little partner was at the time so the first gen Renault Spass had a bit of an update or a facelift in 88 before the second generation arrived in 1991 which was a little bit more rounded off not quite as angular. Let me know what you think about the Renault Spass it certainly would be an unusual sight to see one of these first generations running around but maybe at the time uh, you did actually have one and Maybe your family car at the time, which would I'm sure would have been quite a pleasure. But let me know what you think, good or bad, and we'll see you very soon. But for now, we'll say take care, please subscribe, please like, and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye.